In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I found my dream calling and decided to become an OBGYN. Hello, my name is Erica Mobbin and I'm currently a fourth year medical student at Reno, Nevada. I wanted to tell my story about how I came here and the different loops and turns that I took along my path. But I also wanted to talk about, you know, if you are a first year med student or pre-med, you know, what things you can do early on in your medical school career to help you learn what specialty you might like best. And so I'll start with starting med school. When I originally entered med school, I really thought I was gonna be an orthopedic surgeon. I was on track team, tennis team in high school. I did gymnastics for a while growing up. I had had five orthopedic surgeries myself and I really made a really deep connection with my orthopedic surgeon um, when I was younger. Uh, he was kind of just like someone I looked up to because he was so good at his job. He was so good at explaining what the problem was to my parents, but also as a child, because a lot of these injuries that I had were when I was younger and then through my young adulthood, he was so good and so confident at describing the same processes to someone at my level. I just really appreciated that he was that likable person who also was really good at educating his patients. And then I found out during my, I think during the end of my first year of med school, that you can do procedures in so many other fields. And so cardiology started to be really interesting to me. When we got to the cardiology section of our class didactics, I was like, wow, this stuff is so complex, but also so intuitive. Like it's just such a great field of study. And so for a long time, I also wanted to be a cardiologist. I did cardiology research at the University of Michigan through IRAD or the International Registry of Acute Aortic Dissection. and because, and that was set up because I thought I really wanted to go into cardiology. So I wanted to set myself up and get the research I needed in order to pursue that field, which means going through internal medicine and then doing a fellowship in cardiology and interventional cardiology as well. During my second year at med school, after I had done that summer research program, I was able to work in cardiology as one of my preceptorships. And I learned that it wasn't exactly the patient population I was interested in working with after seeing patients, you know, for four or five hours a week um, and just getting, getting a general taste of what the field was like. And instead I decided, I think I want maybe a younger population. And so I kind of went back and forth again with the full ortho thing because typically you have younger patients in orthopedic surgery. Before I talk about third year, I wanna say that for anyone who's watching, who's a first year, second year, pre-med, whatever, I really recommend that when you start your rotations in med school, that you keep a journal. One of my mentors told me to do this and I felt like it was extremely, extremely beneficial. If you keep a journal and every once in a while, just jot down how you're feeling about each specialty. Are you feeling energized? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling like the days are long and hard, but they go by fast? Are you feeling like the days are long and hard, but they go by slow? Are you constantly checking your watch? Are you excited to tell people about the cases you saw? Do you love the patient population that you work with? Um, are you feeling unfulfilled? Are you feeling fulfilled? Like, you know, just check in with yourself frequently during your third year, write those feelings down because you, you, it's amazing how much you can forget as time goes on about a certain field that, um, I just think that journaling in real time so you can reflect back on your reflections is so important to helping you find that specialty that's for you. And I think at the end of the day, when you really find the right one, you know deep down in your gut, regardless of what you've written down or what Excel sheets you've made for yourself, like that, that is the right one. Um, but I think that reflecting can make you think a little bit deeper about it and can be helpful. When I started my third year, I thought that I wanted to go into something surgical for sure. And at that time, plastics was also on the table. I felt like ortho was cool because you could allow people to have better quality of life. You could um, help people really make an improvement, fix something that was broken, uh, alleviate people from pain. I thought it was really cool to provide someone with function again. And then that's kind of what made me interested in plastics because I realized that in plastics, there was a lot of opportunity to give people function, whether it's burn patients and grafts 
or cancer resection patients who need wound closure, diabetic ulcers. I just thought it was really cool to be fixing something, giving someone form and function. Um, there was something about that that felt really special to me. And so for a long time, I was stuck on plastics. Um, and that was my surgery is my first rotation and I did do an elective week in plastics. However, an elective week is not a lot. So I just kind of trusted that it felt so right and so fun and so great that maybe that was a sign for me. So I continued to pursue this whole plastics idea, trying to do whatever I could to put myself at the best position to do plastics. After my general surgery rotation, I went to family medicine and I loved family medicine. I loved that you can see patients of all ages. I loved that you could do obstetrics in family medicine. And let me tell you, when I first started my third year, I like, I remember in second year, we submit these forms that said like, do you have any preference about like when you'll have certain rotations? And I was like, put peds in OB last because I know I don't wanna do that. Like there is no way that those are the fields I'm gonna go into, <laughs> okay? So keep your mind open because sometimes you just don't know enough to make that call yet. Um, but anyways, that's another story that we'll get into. Family medicine, loved it. Really thought that I was like, maybe I should do family medicine. Um, but my dad is a family physician down in Las Vegas and his practice I know is mostly adults. And I know I could probably make a practice the way I wanted it to be, but it just seems like in bigger cities, sometimes you can be more limited to practicing primary care with adult patients. Um, and I don't know, I mean, there are probably other reasons that I wasn't super interested in family medicine at the end of the day, but I did really love that rotation and we had really amazing attendings that just made it such a wonderful experience. And my last rotation of that first semester was psych and that is pretty much the only rotation that I was like, definitely not. Like this is 100% not what I wanna do. Mental health is really underserved in most places of the country, especially rurally, but I felt miserable and it was not my calling. So I knew that really quickly. My next rotation was internal medicine. Um, I loved it. I loved internal medicine. I thought like, the complexity of the patients was really cool. Um, it was really similar to family medicine. The only thing um, I liked a little bit less about internal was that you did a lot less women's health. Like, I like the idea of doing preventive medicine for women, of seeing women throughout their pregnancies. I thought that was really cool. And like, I didn't get to do that in internal medicine, but there were also a lot of opportunities in internal medicine for fellowship. So I thought maybe um, that's still on the table or maybe primary care. I don't know. I was I was really interested in internal medicine at a point too. As you can tell, I loved like everything. <laughs> and then after internal medicine, I had neurology. That was another one that I thought was interesting and I learned a lot, but I also felt like this is not what I want to do. It was really sad. It just like felt sad to me that a lot of the times for many neurologic diseases, there didn't seem to be like, a true cure, maybe like prevention and progression or like improved quality of life. But there were just so many diseases that like made me feel sad <laughs> seeing, I don't know, it wasn't my cup of tea. I know every field medicine has really like sad medical conditions and natural history of disease, but I, I did not feel good in neurology. So it wasn't my thing. Went to peds, I was right. Did not like peds, did not like working with kids. I love kids, I want my own kids, did not like working with kids, did not. Um, I was really sick for a part of it also, like the only time I ever took a sick day from third year um, was after I got sick from one of the kids in peds and I felt the most miserable I've ever felt sickness. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then my last rotation was OB. And so throughout this whole time, I haven't mentioned, but I was still planning on pursuing plastics this whole time because I was like, mm, maybe plastics, maybe I'll do apply family, maybe plastics and I am. I kind of like dabbled here and there with other specialties, but plastics held strong and continuous throughout this whole year. And so I applied for four plastics away rotations by the time I even started my OB rotation because away rotations you apply for early on um, that year. So I didn't even know really what OBGYN was about. And I had kind of planned all my away rotations in plastics. And I started OB and I started realizing what the work entailed, 
like I liked about other things, seeing patients of all ages, getting to grow with your patients, doing a lot of preventive medicine, getting to do surgery, fixing things with your hands. Like they're, like the patient population was so ideal to me because you see young, healthy people, but you also see older people, you see really sick people, especially in Gai Nong. Um, I just love that there's so much variety and so much room for different fellowships and opportunities. I don't know, I think OB, one of the things that during my ob guide rotation, one of the fields that really stood out to me was reproductive endocrinology and infertility, or REI. And this is where um, most people probably are familiar with IVF or like test tube babies um, for people who have infertility. That's the kind of work that an REI physician would do. And I thought that maybe that was the thing that I really, really wanted to end up doing. And so I just talked to one of my mentors and he immediately set me up with the one of the only two REIs in town. There's only one practice in Reno. And so he sent me up with one of the doctors at that practice. And he said, go to this myomectomy with him. Um, you know, go talk to him at his office, ask him whatever questions you have, see if this is something that you might want to do. And so I said, okay, I was operating with him and there was something about his personality that clicked with me. And I am a quiet person and I didn't talk a lot probably, but and then the next day I went to his office and he told me stories about his patients. And before I left, he read me one of the emails that his patients had written to him. And it was one of the most beautiful, beautiful emails I've ever listened to. <laughs> um, talking about how he helped to get a couple pregnant and the joy that they have from their son and how every time they look at him, they think of him. Um, and it's just really, it's a really incredible and touching field. And I know there are also really, really sad low lows in that field as well. Um, but I don't know, I like listened to him read that email. I went to go to my car to go home at the end of the day and I cried because I was like, wow, this work means so much. Like this is the most meaningful thing I think I could ever do for someone. Um, and so at that point, I think I already knew I wanted to do OB. I fell in love with OBGYN, but I was like, oh, I've already put so much work into going to plastics. I don't know. I can't decide. I've only done a week of plastics, so I don't really know for sure. So I said, screw it. I'll go to my first plastics away rotation. I went to it and I said, if I don't feel fulfilled and if I don't have that same happiness here, I'm going to apply to OB. So I left for my first plastics away at the beginning of July. Um, after like the first week, I was already like, wow, this is not what I thought it was. This is not the fulfillment I thought I would get. And this is not right for me. I had a lot of doubts during that process. I called my mentor probably like at least five times <laughs> that whole time I was gone on that away rotation and she was incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, she helped me, she never told me what to do. She just happened to be an OBGYN, um, but she never told me like, OBGYN is the way to go. She never pressured me to pursue either of the fields. She was so good at being a sounding board and helping me think through like, what kind of lifestyle do you want? What kind of work do you want? What patients do you want? Like, what do you want to spend your days doing? When you wake up and you're 40 years old, what do you want to be your life? And like, I just think it's so important to connect with someone, a mentor, an advisor that can help you think through these questions and can cue you through them because I think that is really what helped me to make the right decision for myself. Um, and that's why I love mentorship so much and I can't wait to mentor people and, um, I don't know, it's very meaningful to me. <laughs> but so I was, you know, about two weeks into this plastics rotation, I was confidently sure I wanted to go into OBGYN. I didn't want to do plastics anymore. Part of the pressure of figuring out if plastics was what I wanted to do was that they were interviewing people during a ways. So the plastics attendings were interviewing us rotating away students while we were there. And I felt so, so guilty taking up their time in an interview if I knew in my heart that I didn't want to do plastics. 
And so, you know, I figured that out. I was like, OB is the way to go. And I emailed the program director and I was like, I am so sorry. I just realized that I don't believe plastics is the field I want to go into. The reason I'm telling you is because I really don't want to waste any of your faculty members precious time during an interview if I know this is not what I want to do. And then, um, you know, like I said, if you want to meet, please let me know. I'd love to talk about it more, blah, blah, blah. Like just as sincere and genuine and honest as I could be, I didn't want to lie. Some of my, some people I talked to were like, you should use this as an opportunity to practice interviews. And I just didn't feel right doing that because first of all, I don't think I had a really passionate answer for why I wanted to do plastics. And second of all, I just could not live with the guilt of taking someone else's time away from them like that. I just felt like it was selfish. So I ended up telling her that I didn't want to go into plastics, but I was still willing to work really hard, show up every day, learn as much as I could because I was in it for the long haul. I signed up for four weeks of rotation and I was going to commit to it, finish it out, even if it wasn't what I wanted to do and take away what I could, which is a lot. Like, I mean, I learned a lot of surgical technique at that program. So I'm really grateful for that experience. I'm also so grateful that I was able to be honest with myself and decide that OBGYN was the right feels for me. Got back to my home institution in August. At that time, I had emailed all the other plastics rotations I had gotten and told them my entire story. I told them that I apologize if it was an inconvenience, if I ended up taking a spot away from someone else and that I was like really grateful for the opportunity, but at this time I would be pursuing something else. And all of the coordinators are so understanding. They say that this happens all the time and that they're really happy that I found my true love in my calling. So I really feel grateful and fortunate that I had so much support and that it was so well received even by these strangers that just are helping me, you know, cancel all of these away rotations. This is August. I had about a month to change my entire personal statement and application for OBGYN instead of plastics, which really wasn't that hard. I was just writing, basically writing a new personal statement and then making sure I have people who could write my letters, which I did, so thank goodness. After that, it was pretty smooth sailing. I submit my application at the typical time, September, mid-September, um, and the only other roadblock that kind of came up for me, like switching specialties, was that during one of my interviews at one of my favorite programs, I was asked like, why did you do this plastic away rotation? And I just told them the truth. I said, I wasn't sure of, um, you know, if OB or plastics was the route for me to go. I wanted to give myself a opportunity to see what plastic surgery looks like at an academic institution. Um, I quickly learned that it wasn't for me. I stood my ground and my commitment and finished out the rotation. And then after that, I switched my focus and my energy towards applying to OBGYN. And I talked about, you know, a lot of the things that I learned during my plastics rotation, including perseverance and dedication to a commitment that I signed up for. And also, um, you know, this honesty that I felt with myself and trying to pursue what felt best and most truthful to myself. I was mentally prepared to get it because I knew that program directors and everyone who was looking at my CV could see my transcript that I had done a plastics away rotation. Um, and I'm surprised honestly that I only got asked about it once, um, but it was at the end of my interview season. So I figured it would have come up by then if I were gonna get that question. And then it just sprung up at the last interview. So <laughs> that is my route to finding OBGYN. My advice for medical students, um, pre-meds, everyone, who is trying to decide what fields of medicine to go into, I say find a mentor or advisor that you trust, journal your experiences and how you feel about different rotations, seek opportunities to get more exposure to the fields you think you might be interested in, keep open-minded about fields that you don't even think you might be interested in, and then of course, at the end of the day, trust your gut. Like really, really trust your gut. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it. If you found it helpful, please give it a like. 
And if you have any other ideas for content that you would like me to create, please leave a comment below. Please consider subscribing to my page because I'll try to be uploading new content about being a medical student and soon being a resident.